Hello and welcome back to Tales from Battle Maison! My name is Spade, and yes, you saw correctly, he is back. Walrain is here, and he's up to shenanigans once again, as we start things off with the usual setup of the Mega Meta Gross and the Mega Evolution and the Home Class Boost Boost, as I end up uh, taking an Earthquake from the Hippowdon, but I do take it because Mega Metagross is freaking bulky and amazing and then I end up skillfully dodging a sheer cold from the wall rain. Make a wish over to Mega Metagross, go for the Zen head but hoping for some flinches, but of course the sheer cold lands this time. And down goes my Mega Metagross. So then I send out my Dragonite, go for the DD as the uh, Hippowdon ends up going for some curses, so I could really use a wall breaker like Mega Metagross right about now, but I don't have it, so I need to uh, not get greedy, go straight for the attack after the plus one, end up getting burned by the Chandelure's Will-O-Wisp, and then I have to rotate over to my Chansey and go for the Heal Bell as the Chandelure goes for the Calm Mind. And this is what I really like about this team. I don't need to worry about status like Burn or Paralysis crippling my team as long as I don't have my Chansey crippled by any sort of means. So uh, get off the heal bell, uh, go straight for the attack again with the Dragon I finish off the Chandelure with that Dragon Claw. And um, that's great because I get a free turn of leftovers and that means I can just go for the Protect on this following turn and restore back more leftovers because keeping that multi-scale intact is a priority. And I really didn't, couldn't go for some wishes there because uh, that would have been too risky with the Hippowdon cursing and the uh, friggin' wall rain in the back. But it keeps on cursing, which is bad, because I can't go for any more DDs as long as that wall rain is there in the back. I cannot risk it. But finally, I end up knocking it out, which is awesome. It does have also lax incense, so I could have missed, but it doesn't happen, so I knock it out, and I can just finally start uh, boosting up and matching the Hippowdon's defensive boosts from its curses. And uh, yeah, just gonna keep going for the DDs as the Hippowdon uses rest and it also has a Chesto Berry. So what I decide to do here is just go for the attack because I wanna entice and force the uh, Hippowdon to use rest again because now that it's uh, Chesto Berry is burned, you know, I can force it to sleep and do nothing for a couple of turns. So that's awesome. Knock out the Polytoad in the process. End up getting a defense drop from the Crunch, which, you know, isn't really nice with all those curses that the Hippowdon has on its back. And it keeps on doing and going for the curses. Uh, but I need to stick to my game plan. Go for the Wish. Go for the Protect. Restore the Multi-Scale. The Hippowdon does get free boosts. But as long as I just stick to my game plan, I should be fine. So now I got my multi-scale again. Hippo actually goes for the EQ, so that's nice. Get another free boost here. And uh, finally the Hippo does go for the rest. So I can get a couple free turns here, which is excellent. I can get all the way up to plus six. And then I can start attacking the Hippodon finally with my uh, attack boosts match matched off to the Hippo. So I'll go for the Dragon Claw, go for another one. I actually end up getting a critical hit which is nice. Finish off the Hippo for the game, but the reality that only sped things up, so that's awesome. But we got another match here, more physical walls that on paper really are a problem to this team, so that's why I'm showcasing these kind of defensive matches uh, today, because uh, my team only consists of physical attackers. But anyways, start things off with the usual setup. Uh, get the Mega Evolution and the Home Claws as the Arimaldo Alejandro goes for the Earthquake, and by the looks of things, it is Choice Bandit. But at least I got the uh, freaking Dragonite and Talonflame in the back. But anyways, go for Wish, take an Earthquake, go for Zen Headbutt, as the Steelix starts cursing up this time, so that's no good. But still, Zen Headbutt is my most optimal play in this situation. Plus, I can score some flinches if I just get lucky. But get hit by a Payback, that's over half. Need to make another wish here as the game rotates over to Swampert, goes for the waterfall. So I actually need to uh, keep this wish for myself as the Swampert starts cursing up. So that's not really good. But I got my Mega Metagross Wall Breaker uh, still alive. So things are looking all right. They're all right. So uh, go for another wish, take a payback from the Steelix. Like nothing really. And I go for the Zen Headbutt. 
and I don't knock out the Armado, but I do get a flinch. So I get my wish, and I go for the Brick Break this time, because it's my most optimal play, in case the Steelix wants to rotate in. And I actually make some really nice uh, in-game predictions here, predicting the Steelix to come in, go for the Brick Break, do some massive damage to it, and uh, then I know the game is not gonna stay in. Go for Zen Headbutt again. But then the Swampert uses Rest, and much like the Hippowdon, it has a Chesto Berry, so that kind of blows. And now, I'm just gonna keep playing safe, uh, the Steelix does attack with Payback, but the Zen Headbutt is a 2-hit KO at this point. So I finally knock out the Steelix, and the Marowak is here, goes for Detect, you know, that doesn't really matter, it's just gonna stall for some time. So go for Zen Headbutt right here as the Swampert goes for Curse. So it's gonna be able to live the uh, next Zen Headbutt right. Wrong, because Mega Metagross, it's just so freaking powerful. It doesn't care, it just destroys everything, physical wall or not. Mega Metagross has your number, and we knock it out. We knock out the Marowak for the game. And then the last game, kind of a comic relief, but we got some defensive threats uh, on the team preview again. Especially that Suicune and uh, Cresselia, but uh, as usual, go for the usual setup. Uh, this is how I win most of my matches, and this is already battle number 850. But uh, freaking Latios thinks he's a Dragonite and goes for the Dragon Dance. And I go for the Meteor Mash on the Cresselia, which actually sets up a Trick Room. And uh, this is really interesting. I switch up over to Zen Headbutt this time, take an Icy Wind from the Suicune, and that makes me faster than most of the biggest threats on the field right now. And this Cresselia, you know, it's not able to do anything, so I go for the Meteor Mash, and I even get an attack boost, so I'm fully set up, minus one speed in the Trick Room, plus two attack, I finish off the Suicune as well, I outspeed it in the Trick Room, as I outspeed this lot here that has boosted itself with the Dragon Dance, so look how much that did for ya. Knock it out, Trick Room returns to normal, or the Dimensions do, and then the Landorus tries to go for the Desperate Flinch, ends up getting a crit instead, does nothing anyways, finish it off with the Meteor Mash, knock it out, and that will be the game, which you just lost. So there we go. Sometimes the game just wants you to win. Sometimes, you know, it crits you left and right and absolutely just cripples your whole being and your soul with crits left and right, sheer colds landing and shenanigans like that. But on the other days, there are matches like this where, yeah, the game just wants you to win, which is, you know, really funny uh, thinking it's coming from Balmason. But when you have as many matches as I have, you know, Weird things then to happen. Let's put it like that. So anyways, that will be the game for today. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, this is Spade, rambling and signing out. Peace.